This video will be looking at the uh, interesting creative ways of using nested for loops. So let's start with this diagram that you want to print. And the two questions that you need to ask in these kind of problems are typically how many rows are being printed and what is repeated in each row. So if we look at this, we can see there are five rows printed and in each row, uh, asterisks are repeatedly printed. So on the question how many rows are being printed, we said there are five rows printed. So you have a for loop that goes from one to five. That's very easy. The for loop starts at one and it goes up to five. That simply says I will now be printing five rows. What's done for each row is slightly more complicated. First of all, we see that there's a certain number of stars being printed. So if you look at your rows in row one, there's one star printed. In row two, there's two stars printed. In row three, three stars, etc. So we can say that in row X, we print X stars. In row four, we print four stars, for example. So inside the, the first for loop, there's a body of the loop that prints the stars. So we've got another for loop. Now notice what that for loop does. It goes from one to X. So that simply says in each row we print x stars. What is x? It's the row we're currently busy with. So when x is 1, we in row 1 and we print 1 star. When x becomes 2, we in row 2 and we print 2 stars. The next thing that we need to note is that printing a row is printing stars next to each other. You'll see there's a console.write. And then once you've printed the whole row, you need to jump to the next line so that the next row starts on the next line. And for that you need the last console right line after the inner for loop. Okay, let's do another diagram. It's simply, again, there's five rows, but in instead of printing stars, we print one and then one, two, and then one, two, three, etc. So now I've got a more uh, a method of doing this. I say to myself, what would be the best way of numbering my rows? That's the X column you see there. So clearly this would be make sense to say I've got row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, and row 5 in my X column. In my Y column, I say what happens inside each row. And there I can see it goes from 1 to 1, actually stays at 1, then goes from 1 to 2, then goes from 1 to 3, 1 to 4 and 1 to 5. So at the bottom I, I summarize it as what happens with my x variable and my y variable. So it's clear that x goes from 1 to 5. That's easy to see down the left column. And then you will note in row 1 y goes from 1 to 1. In row 3 y goes from 1 to 3. So y goes from 1 to x. Okay, so what we've done on the left hand side now has the following impact on my nested for loops. First of all, we said the rows goes from 1 to 5. That is my x value. So simply my for loop goes x starts at 1, stops at 5. Secondly, we said y goes from 1 to x. You'll see there at the bottom and we can also see it in the diagram. So my for loop goes from 1. y is assigned to 1 y is less than or equal to x. And then thirdly, in the diagram itself, we notice now we're not printing stars anymore. We're printing actual numbers, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So clearly those are the values of y every time. So notice in the console, right, instead of printing a star, we now print the value for y. And y goes from 1 to x every time. Right, let's do one last example. Again, we see we've got five rows, uh, but in each row we print something else now. Five fives, then four fours, three threes, two twos, and a one. So in terms of our methodology, we now see that the best way to number the rows is not one, two, three, four, five. It's obviously five, four, three, two, one. So my X column numbers them five, four, three, two, one. The Y column is not it says how many fives are printed and clearly when we in row five the top row we print five fives 
Then we print four fours, three threes, two twos, and one one. So now we have a sense that y needs to go from one to five, then one to four, then one to three. So at the bottom we see x goes from five down to one for each row, and inside each row y goes from one to x. So once again what we did on the left hand side has an influence on our two for loops. Our outer for loop, which has to do with the number of rows, we notice that we numbered the rows 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So the for loop starts at 5 and goes down to 1. The inner for loop that has to do with what's printed on each row, we said that we decided x, y must go from 1 to x. So our for loop starts at 1, y is assigned to 1, and it goes up to x. Now we see that we still say console.write y in the code. But if you look at the picture itself, at the diagram, that can't work. Because if we would say console write y in row 1, then it would print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But it's printing 5, 5s. And the same for, say, row 3, which is printing 3, 3s. If we had to print the value of y, it would print 1, 2, 3. So what we do is we now don't print y, y we print x. So on row 1, x remains 5 so it will print 5 5 5 5 5 and on row 4 x remains 4 so it prints 4 4 4 4 